Good afternoon, once again. So I took some fleece that I have. It's a small fleece from a brown and white Jacob that I purchased. And I took some, put them in a couple mesh bags, washed them in hot water, washed them twice, rinsed them three times. I just kind of squeeze them to get the water out. Uh, so they're still wet and compacted. And I've already undone one of these. I've done two of these. I did two of these like this. One's in the house on a towel. The other I'm doing out here. On the screen. And this is gonna be the drying screen here. So we're gonna see which one dries better and quicker. So I'm just gonna lay these guys these guys out. Because I had what I had done is I had pulled the locks from the dirty fleece, just like these, and then stacked them all up, put them in the bag, in the bags, plural, and um, gave them a bath. And these ones I did hot water. The other one, um, not sure if you can see it in the background. So. We'll, uh, Show you here real quick. So those ones there in the bag are my um, Suffolk sheep, the last of the uh, fleece, and those were done in cold water, cold water wash and rinse. And right now they're just drip drying. So these ones I washed fairly quickly because I didn't have to use very much water for the quantity so i was able to do it in this in the in the bucket that i bought and um, it actually worked out quite well so this is all natural color from the same sheep um, it's got browns grays and whites all intermixed That's basically what I've done. So when I washed the second time, it was hot water, and then I let it cool. And then the water I used for rinsing was about the same temperature as the uh, cooled, cooled down wool. As you can see here, there's some vegetable matter in there that I'm not worried about because the combing process will knock those out um, so some of the vegetable matter that you find isn't really a huge deal um, I find that most of it just kind of falls out when you're spinning or when you're um, carting or combing so right now we'll just lay all this out and we'll let it dry so it's kind of a labor of love, labor intensive, and uh, depending on how far down the rabbit hole you go, will determine what you do, whether you buy your stuff or you do it yourself from a raw fleece, which is what I've chosen to do. So I've chosen to get the raw fleece, uh, skirt it, um, sort it, uh, pull locks from it, or just wash it in bulk like I did the the white fleece and um, and then pull locks afterwards if you want um, this one here I'm waiting for my uh, carding machine I'm going to do a bulk um, carding with this uh, Suffolk here and see um, I may have to put this back through 
um, hot water because there may be too much lanolin left for me to want to uh, deal with which is what I ended up doing with another batch that I cold water washed but cold water washing got all the, the gunk out so all I got to do is just do a, a quick hot water um, wash uh, one wash with soap and, and hot water and then uh, and then rinse it out again get the, the lanolin out how much of this I'm gonna fit on this little screen I might have to run and grab another screen which will be fine got many screens and I don't have to lay it out quite so loosely either it will still work just fine. So I may just kind of bulk it up a little bit here because the breeze outside is probably going to dry things fairly quick. Even though it's going to rain, uh, we're still a few hours away from any rain coming, and I'll make sure I have everything in before the rains arrive. And I still have more tractoring to do, get some more garden space put in. And yes, some of you are back east where it's just freezing, freezing, freezing cold. And uh, I'm glad I'm here and not there and wish you all the best and keep nice and warm um, until it's over. Uh, it is winter. It gets cold. Sometimes more so than others. So this is the process. This is what you do. The videos out there are a little bit older. So I'm adding some new content. Still the same. Just now I'm doing it. Maybe you will too. So I decided to go down a fairly deep rabbit hole with the uh, wool and uh, all the process. And uh, all because I want to learn how to spin flax which is a whole nother dimension to why I went down this rabbit hole and, uh, doing this stuff is kind of neat because it's uh, you know kind of independent you know you can get to the point where you can make your own clothing um, that'd be great and I do have a loom so I'm gonna be making bulk yarn to run on the loom so I can make cloth and since I know how to sew I can make cloth and uh, and then make my own shirts or whatever. This is 
is on top of my full-time job. So that's where that's at. I figured I'd take some time and just ramble while I'm sorting all this stuff out. I'm trying to get it done in a reasonable time frame here. Get most everything onto the, the rack. It's kicking up a little bit. If I'm not careful, it's going to blow everything around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put another uh, screen over the top of this one just to hold it down but still allow the air to flow. Just a bit small on the smaller side, so I'm going to kind of have to fudge here, squeezing stuff in, making some space. I think I can do this all. Have it looks pretty good. Oops, it's like a bunch of dead rats laid out to dry. <laughs> anyway, 12 minutes. Holy cow. Okay, talk to y'all later. All right, so had to cut this short a little bit. Uh, the rain has already started, so this just shows it. Got two screens there, one in front, one behind. And we're in the carport, and the wind is just blowing, just blowing right across. And it will, uh, should dry that fairly quick. So I'm gonna go grab the other wool and get it out from under the rain, because the rain can cause it to felt if it gets hit hard with rain. So we'll uh, put something together here and post it up. And, uh, We'll talk to y'all later.